Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're going to be working on these Red Wing Mock Toe boots after some attempt at DIY work. Leave it for the professionals, please. But for those of you who are curious, this is the model 8138, if you're curious. Today we're going to be doing one of these Vibram soles in the Grigio color and uh, changing out the top eyelets to speed hooks. So come join us, check it out and see how it's done. All right, everyone, so thank you for joining us. And like I mentioned, we're gonna be working on these Red Wing boots here that a gentleman tried to do himself. So now it's time to take it apart. Only dilemma is that he kind of pulled that midsole up a little bad in that spot. So I'm not gonna be able to cut it the same way I would usually, but it will still manage. So first things first, gotta get a little bit of solvent right around the welt area to deactivate the adhesives. Go. I mean, he was somewhat on a track to resold them and stuff, but he wouldn't have been able to replace the midsole because the midsole would have to be stitched on, and the only way he'd be able to is either hand stitching or with a machine like we have, a Goodyear weld stitcher, so or a weld stitching machine, whatever you want to call it. We call it a curve needle. All right, sorry, got interrupted there, but first things first, got to make sure this thing's nice and sharp. All right, now some of you knife users and stuff may say that's the wrong way to sharpen a knife or something. Sharpening a knife, there's a, a lot of different ways. There's, like, there's certain knives, there's no way I'd ever use one of these things here to sharpen it and certain knives that I'll do certain angles or directions but yeah that's the way it goes now I got another call sorry it's one of those days where phones are going off left and right and everything so we got little girl's birthday coming up and everything so a lot going on all right but anyways at this point I'm just splitting the midsole away from the welt by cutting through the stitches and that's simultaneously separating the glue since it's deactivated with the solvent and everything so this is why I have this nifty little chair around revealing that cork underneath see all that here comes the hard part this is the part that he was already messing with and I have to be careful because this midsole that they use is a little bit on the softer side from Red Wing and so sometimes it makes the knife want to angle a certain way and if I do it wrong I'll cut through the welt so success so he was on the right track if you were just to replace just the sole without replacing the midsole or the cork or anything like that that's a doable thing so all right so i'm gonna throw that out now obviously there are some times that we save the soles and everything but it, in this case we're not needing it it's not going to be usable for tracing or anything like that this little thread here i'm going to cut off just some thread that's actually the uh the stitching that holds the welt down and it's tying down the uh it's tied down in a knot on the inside here and it's just a bunch of it a bunch of it just sticking out so we're not causing any kind of harm it doesn't need to be restitched or replaced or anything like that however it looks like the whoa ah, hit my hand there however it looks like the gemming is coming apart now the gemming for those of you who don't know so we've got the welt here. This is that piece where you got the stitched on the midsole there. 
So that's the welt. And then right next to it is the upper, the leather upper that gets tucked under. Sometimes you'll be able to see, like in this one here, the toe counter, which gives it that sturdier toe, or maybe a steel toe or a fiberglass or something or whatever it may be, like up at the toe here, another layer. And then you see the liner, which is that right there. That's what's on the inside of the boot, that lighter color. And then you see that white piece, that's the gimming. That's what's glued to this leather footbed here that your foot sits on the, on the inside. And then you can see the stitches right there. And so the welt is stitched through all those layers and through the gimming and, and the gimming kind of holds it down to the footbed. And a lot of times it just comes unglued and that's a normal thing. Doesn't mean that the gimming has to be torn out and replaced or anything like that. This gimming is in perfectly good shape. It's just coming unglued. I just gotta clean it up and re-glue it all. Okay. Now, these, because they, uh, because they don't have a shank in there originally from the factory, and since it is, a, it starts out as a wedge sole, um, usually a lot of the wedge sole style boots like that, they don't tend to have a shank in them. However, these we're putting on have a unit heel, so it's got a 90 degree angle drop. So we are going to have to put a shank in here to make sure that it can accommodate that heel there a little better. Let's see, Man, the cork is gummy. But anyways, so that kind of gives you that base idea of what's going on here. At this point, I'm just gonna clean out the rest of the cork here. Pull the old stitches from the welt and uh, replace the cork, get the shank in there, start getting ready to put on the midsole and everything. So I'll just kind of show you guys step by step, not much else to explain. So yeah, maybe we'll just do a little bit of a fast forward of different things and stages. But that's what's going to be done is clean out the rest of the cork, probably on the sander or something. I'll do what I can by hand, so I'm not wasting your time. Uh, stitches will get pulled, cork put in, shank put in, and then the midsole put on there as well. Now one thing I'll do though, before I start messing with it, right at that spot where he was cutting it, or I was trying to cut it, Sorry, constantly getting interrupted here. That's why I can't get much work done, but yeah, I just gotta pull out this piece of thread here, otherwise it's gonna get in my way pretty badly when it comes time to remove the stitches. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on and do what needs to be done. So just enjoy watching it through the process of how things are done.
All right, everyone, so I just pulled this out of the oven, so I'm gonna have to stick it quick, but I want to show you real quick. So I've got the fiberglass shank put in here. Um, we could put a steel one in as well, but because we're putting such softer soles on there, we're not putting anything heavy on it. Um, putting a steel one on, it just kind of, kind of takes away a little bit from that softer material. But, go ahead and start hammering this in. So this is predetermined density cork instead of that hot cork like the, these had before in them. Predetermined density uh, cork is, again, like the name implies, it's got the same density and same thickness as what it's supposed to be. Where the hot cork, unfortunately, it, although it sounds great and it's quicker to apply and everything, unfortunately if you put too much in there, put not enough in there, it won't do so good with the shoes or boots in this case. So, all right, everyone. So, I got this out of the oven. It's nice and flimsy now. And time to go ahead and get that midsole on there. Now, I'm using a brown just because the edging on these is a little bit more on the brown side. And uh, I was gonna match that up. Otherwise, the neutral colored one that we have, it really stands out compared to the sole. At this point, I'm pretty much done for the for now with these ones. I just gotta stick them on the press, press down the welt, and then trim up the edges, and then it's time to go ahead and stitch. So once it's all ready to stitch, I'll see you guys back here when it's time to do that. All right, everyone. So we're over at our machine and uh, ready to stitch the midsole on these. Everything's cured. I trimmed it up just a little bit closer on the edges. Uh, there were a few spots that were just kind of sticking out that I didn't like, so. Just ran to the trimmer real quick, but I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Some of you like seeing sometimes the mechanics of it all, but I'll go ahead and do that. We've got uh, white thread on the bottom, so that means the white thread's gonna be up top here. That's what was there originally. And I've just got black for underneath here, nothing too fancy. Uh, we'll get the sole to cover it up anyways, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Clip that real quick. set there oh, screen went blank okay it's kind of hard to see underneath that leather but all the way around on the bottom so I'm gonna go clean this off I'm gonna use some tol uh, some turpentine basically to clean off any oils and residues off of here and then get that first coat of glue the soles I will sand up and do the same thing with them and uh, when it's time to stick I'll see you guys back in just a bit all right everyone so I got these trimmed up this morning after they kind of cured all around this area I did on the five and one but the back of the heel here however does not fit under the machine so well. So that I have to do by hand with a knife. I already did the left foot. Let's go ahead and do the right one. And so I just use a knife like this. I got it already sharpened up, but it's just a matter of being careful, making sure that the leather upper is out of the way and angling the knife too, simultaneously. So, because if I accidentally angle it inward too much and everything then, 
it's gonna basically make the sole beveled inward and we don't want that. So either it has to be a straight cut or the safer bet is beveling it outward during the cutting process. But at the same time, when you're trying to bevel it outward, the delay, the dilemma is that you're angling the whole knife basically and you can accidentally cut the upper a little bit. Um, so it takes a, takes a bit of practice of getting the hang of it and stuff. Plus, as you can see, I'm also simultaneously pulling on the loose piece that's going to go in the trash later so that uh, the knife doesn't get wedged or anything in between the materials. Now, I'm going to get up and wedge this in between my body and the table. And as you can see, I have to do short slices around the majority of the area and not just large slices because when you do large slices, again, you're going to cut the boot itself. So there we go. I've got a good chunk of it off already. Obviously, it's not very even or anything like that, as you can tell. But this just at least removes the bulk of it so that when I start sanding it, I'm not having to sit there on the sander for too long because when you sand it for too long, the material heats up and so does the adhesive and then the adhesive deactivates a little bit. Um, it will reactivate. Uh, so adhesives have a have kind of that fine balance. Heat activates it, but it also deactivates it. Um, so the, it, it's almost like, you know, if the sole gets hot, I have to make sure it's nice and hot and then stick it back on the press and everything. But this is a crepe material, which is softer. So it's kind of manageable and fairly easy to do um, as far as, you know, just sanding it without having any issues of the sole actually heating up. When we get into the more solid rubbers, uh, like day night or the uh, other version of the Vibram sole like this, that's a solid rubber. Those are much tougher density and so during the sanding process I'm kind of alternating the spots that I'm sanding and then go back over them once it cools off you know through the whole process where this one I can really just grind through that whole area there and not have much issues and then set it up on on the machine to dry while, or cool off while I'm doing the other boot by the time I'm done with the second boot I can move on to the next machine which will grind it down even more fine so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do I'm not going to do too much more talking during that sanding process and everything but just sit back relax enjoy it if you like or fast forward whichever one works um, usually it's kind of sped up anyways but i'll go ahead and move on to the sanders now Alright everyone, so got these conditioned up, so the conditioner is soaking in right now, still got to buff them up afterwards, but for now I got to pull out these uh, top two eyelets here. So I already pulled one out and we use a tool like this, this is a remover for eyelets and speed hooks and a lot of that kind of stuff. But basically this prong goes inside the eyelet, on the back end the eyelet's got somewhat, you know, I forgot what they call it, but they flower out basically on the back end here instead of using a washer. Sometimes you'll find in some boots that they have a washer as well holding in place, but these ones don't, which is 
in my personal preference that's what i prefer but there we go so got that out before that tool it was a nightmare getting these things out because you had to drill them out but there you go that's how that piece comes out for you um but yeah before we ever had these tools that was that was just a pain taking it out basically so let's see on the back end here for you so just pushes it there we go hear that click grab some pliers and pull it out there we go so i'm gonna go ahead and get through all of those real quick and then uh, i'll switch the camera over to the um the speed hook press i've got the speed hooks all lined up over here those are the ones we're going to be using there so we'll see you back here in just a minute all right everyone so we're over here at our um what is it rivet press basically and it has these different dies so this one right here is the bottom part which is going to press out the pin right here on the speed hooks you can see it's got that kind of split there and this just gets screwed into the top here and then come on there we go. and then i've got the bottom die where it's already got the speed hook loaded in there as you can see right there this little piece right here alone costs more than the entire press these dies get kind of pricey sometimes just you know i was it was kind of interesting when the first time i found out about all the prices in our industry of certain things when i was ordering things i was like wow that is kind of intense there so all right but oh uh so i'm gonna leave that there the pin's just gonna go straight through and I've got these kinds of washers here. They're a little bit different shaped, but that's because the hole here is kind of large. And so I already did one, you can see right there. That one turned out beautiful right there. And so that's what we want it to do. You can see how it gets flattened out and everything on the back end. And then right there does that. So it's kind of like a perfect finish on that one. So put that there, put the washer on. and then basically just takes a lot of uh, arm power sorry my hand might be in the way there okay there we go all right so this is just the first stage see how it's uh, somewhat flattened out let's go ahead maybe touch this one up just a little bit one more time I feel like I'm gonna shift the whole table sometimes with these things. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna move over. I have a little piece on the edge of the corner of the table that we're at here, and I'll let you see what that looks like. All right, so I got this little piece here. Might not look like much, but it's actually a little attachment for the die. I left it on here on the hook. Make sure that it's positioned because I, want, I can twist it at this point right now just enough. And just fit it into that hole right there and it's gonna get noisy i think that's probably like one of the noisiest things usually and then from there i could just slide it off there we go that's beautiful to you guys it might not look too beautiful but for me that's great so because we got the washers in there and everything that's gonna really help to make sure that these eyelets don't come out because those holes from the uh, eyelets or did I say eyelets these hooks won't come out because the eyelets originally from the factory made some fairly large holes you can see there and if I just use the hook speed hook on its own now it would hold in for a little while but uh, eventually because it flowers out in other words like this eyelet here um the hook flowers out it's going to eventually just rip through and it, with all the tension that you, a lot of people put on these last two holes sometimes three they're they're pretty pretty weak in other words and you really want to make sure that um they're nice and strong so that's why i put the washer there but that's what that piece right there looks like if you want to see without it loaded up so the speed hook goes right in there Sometimes it's a tight squeeze because this is a new die that I have. 
And so I have to take the hammer a little bit and just tap it just a little bit to get it into position. Now it's going to be pressed out nicely. So that's it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out the rest of it real quick. Um, I got to throw some new laces in there because obviously the old ones I had to take out and they were pretty shabby. The conditioner is still kind of soaking in. I got to buff them up. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, everyone. So got them finished out. Just got to put the laces in these. But there you go. Got the speed hooks on the top two rows. Makes it a lot easier for lacing because you can see how tight these are even on my hand and stuff like that. So sometimes getting your foot in there can be a little bit challenging. So speed hooks come into play then, um, you know, so that it's a lot easier to actually get your foot in. But that's how we do it. I've got the Vibram uh, mini lug sole on there, or not mini lug, the Vibram Montagna sole in the lug pattern in the crepe material with a uh, brown composite midsole on there that's stitched on. Got them conditioned up with the Saphir Beauty Cure oiled leather. And voila. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions. Um, shorter questions, preferably anything longer, please either call or email us um, because going through comments is a little bit challenging, it turns out. But I'm um, trying to keep up with them as well as much as possible. Uh, there's a little piece of thread here dangling. Otherwise, uh, you can always go through our website, cobblersplus.com. If you want a resold done, these are not listed yet on our website, but I will be doing so as quickly as possible uh, so that you can order as well. This sole here comes in a variety of colors. Um, you don't necessarily need to go for the Grigio. There were a few colors that they discontinued that we still have in stock available. Green, I believe, was one of them. Orange was another one. And then... Um, uh, let's see green and orange and then I believe they kept the red and the the Grigio is actually a newer one for them technically uh, they've kept the red black obviously they have kind of a yellowish color as well kind of almost like on the laces here maybe a little bit uh, more towards the dusty color in other words but yeah I'll, I'll just leave a picture of the different sole color options uh, at the very end if so for you but otherwise um, if you are watching this video and it's still not listed on our website for a resole with this type of sole uh, you're more than welcome just to ship in the shoes over to us there's a little uh, spot a little pdf form that you can print out from our website under the services tab if you pull that down it says specialty repairs order form I believe yep, services tab um, let's see, specialty repairs order form. Just click the link on there for the uh, PDF form. You can print that out, put in all your information, what you want done, and once they arrive, we'll give you a call. But otherwise, if it's something that's on our website, please do order it through the website because it makes it a lot easier to track your order on our end, and then you get notified also once it's on its way with the tracking details and everything. So, again, if you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button helps our channel grow share it as well if you have any friends that uh, have red wing boots or any other shoes share the channel with them helps the channel grow uh, we've recently passed 7,000 subscribers and uh, continue to grow thank you everybody who's been part of the channel i greatly appreciate it but make sure you hit that notification bell icon so you get that little ding as soon as we're as soon as we have a video up so you're notified when our next video is out and also you can be notified when we do our random live streams we're not currently on a set schedule for live streams they're kind of random but there may be a chance for you to win prizes last live stream we did we gave away seven uh seven items for the seven thousand subscribers that we had for random winners and uh there were some pretty good saphir mainly saphir based products but we had a few other things like moo buzz and other stuff too so again thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time